Hi, my name is Albert, and I'm 29 years old. Have you ever had to wait for something? I have. For a new heart. You'll be surprised at the number of people in America who are in a similar position. There are currently 121,000 people on the waiting list for a heart transplantation. There's not much chance of getting it, so I graduated from college ahead of schedule and devoted myself completely to medicine. I wanted to help people, people like me, but my heart gave out. And on March the 12th, 2019, it stopped beating. Yet, I survived. Since my youth, I had had health problems. I often felt pains in my chest and struggled to breathe. Doctors told me that I had cardiomyopathy, a disease of the main muscle in the heart, myocardium. As my heart weakened, it became more apparent that I needed a transplant. And so, I joined a very long line. While I was waiting, I was given this, a mechanical heart. I needed to carry it around with me in a backpack, always, even though it weighs 12 pounds. Just imagine, my whole life depended on a device that was outside my body. It could act as a real heart for several years, allowing someone to be able to wait for a real heart. I have a lot of limitations. For example, I can't walk for a long time, I can't take a bath, and I can't sleep on my back. But such a heart is a miracle for me, even if it's not forever. I'm still waiting for a heart transplant, but the queue is almost at a standstill. There are still 50 people ahead of me. For diagnosis, I have often had to go to the hospital. On one of these trips, I met a nurse, Sophie, and I suggested we share a lemonade sometime. We had so much in common. We talked and laughed about our favorite Netflix series. It was a strange sensation, as if she were my soulmate. Have you ever felt like this? Once, when I was being examined, Sophie came to me. She touched me, and my artificial heart began to beat so quickly that it almost jumped out of my backpack. I blushed with embarrassment, but Sophie just smiled. When I left the doctor, she told me that her heart also beat faster when around me. That was my hint. She liked me. We began to meet in the evenings in the hospital and talked. We felt good together, but I felt like a freak, always dragging my heart along with me and ever ready to recharge it. I began to wonder, why was Sophie such a hard case like me? I'd rather ignore both mine and her feelings. I couldn't have a relationship. In order to not think about Sophie, I threw myself headfirst into my work. I devoted myself to the study of artificial hearts in order to design and create an artificial heart that could serve an entire life. Imagine how many people I would save, including myself. In general, I devoted myself to my work and tried to come to the hospital when Sophie wouldn't be there. Sometimes, when I saw her in the hallway, I hid. I was, however, getting worse. The queue for transplants was getting shorter, but the days were flying faster as well. Should I not have tried? Was I not justified in the attempt? I couldn't wait for a heart transplant. I felt that my time was short. I was short of breath at even small physical exertions, and I would sweat terrible cold sweats. How would you feel if your heart, your whole life, depended on a piece of iron that you carried with you? I came to the hospital that day, but not to be examined. I wanted to say goodbye to Sophie. I understood that there was very little time left for my artificial heart. My hands dropped. There wasn't any hope anymore. Sophie came. I said my goodbyes, and she began to cry. It hurt me. I mean, it really hurt. Even though my heart was outside my body, it was filled with love for Sophie. Then everything began to spin before my eyes. I tried to shout out, but lost consciousness, and everything went black. I woke up in a hospital bed. My backpack was lying nearby and emitted rhythmic tapping. Everything was fine. It turned out this was not to be my end, but there had been a massive strain on my heart. The doctors advised bed rest at the hospital as my condition was still unstable. My mechanical heart would too soon be in a critical condition. The fact that I had to lie in bed was bad, but I thought that, at least, I would spend my last days with Sophie. But for some reason, she did not come. She did not come the next day. My condition worsened and I wasn't allowed to get out of bed. But I only had one thought. Where was she? Maybe she took a vacation because it was hard for her to say goodbye to me. Perhaps. My pain and shortness of breath was intensifying. I no longer asked the doctor anything. I already knew that my end was soon. Suddenly, a joyful doctor burst into my room. You're saved, he said. You will have a new heart today. I couldn't even say thank you. Tears of happiness poured from my eyes. I could live a normal life. Sophie, wait for me. 
The operation was a success. A real human heart was beating inside of me. I no longer needed a mechanical one. It feels weird for me to be without a backpack or my batteries. The first thing I thought about, once I had recovered, was finding Sophie and telling her everything. But the doctor asked me to stay calm and recuperate a while longer. I had to remain in the hospital. Only when I was discharged did they give me a letter from my donor. It turned out my new heart was female. My female donor wrote, Dear friend, I have decided to donate my heart for transplantation after meeting a man who became very close to me. He had the exact same problem as you do. I wished I could have given my heart to him. I hope it lasts you a long time. Take care of it. The letter was signed. The name? Sophie. I went out into the corridor and stopped a passing nurse. I wanted her to tell me where Sophie was. But when she heard her name, the nurse began to sob. It turns out that a few weeks ago there was a terrible accident with Sophie. It is her heart that is now beating in my chest. Without knowing it, she saved me. Now we are inseparable. Would you sacrifice your heart for another? Tell us in the comments below, and remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.